Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are back again for another dose of uh, Joint School Live. And uh, with me today, I have Luke Peterson coming to us from Pennsylvania, US. Uh, and he is a knee replacement uh, physical therapist, uh, very much specializing on that field. And that's what we'll be focusing on today. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, so be, before we start sort of going through some um, tips and, and questions around sort of what, what you found in your experience you know, has, has helped and, and supported people with, uh, with knee arthritis, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So um, I'm a physical therapist here in the U.S. and my brother and I were actually both physical therapists. So we together created this website, this platform called Knee Replacement Therapist. And we put together, basically, it's a huge resource for anyone who is at some stage in their knee replacement journey. So anyone from um, deciding if surgery is right for them or they're looking at conservative treatment options to someone who is planning for the surgery and, of course, someone who is recovering and rehabbing after surgery. And that's something that I've been working on for about three years now. And um, we have really have a lot of great resources out there, different video programs and things like that. And it's kind of my uh, my side gig, my thing that I really like to do on my on the side. And of course, I'm practicing physical therapist as well. Okay, excellent, excellent. So, yeah, um, you, you you'll have built up a, a real wealth of knowledge of uh, you know what. What, what people have found most helpful in terms of the resources you're putting together and you know, for, for the different stages and different situations that, that people out there who are watching this now might be in, in terms of their knee pain, their arthritis, and taking steps towards managing it, especially in the strange circumstances we now find ourselves in. Yep, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, so, so if we start sort of more like generally, uh, in terms of the kind of, you know, when, when someone comes to you and says, you know, my, I've, I've got knee pain, um, they may or may not have a formal diagnosis of, of arthritis as such, but what, how, how do you kind of start the workup, so to speak, from, from your point of view? Yeah, so I think the big thing is just kind of getting an overall picture of what exactly they're dealing with. So, you know, knee pain can take on a lot of different characteristics. Um, it can be in different locations. It can be different um, intensities, different subjective descriptions of the pain, um, different causes. Maybe there was a traumatic incident that kind of started and initiated the knee pain. It could be something that is more insidious, came on over time. Um, so really, it's just getting that general picture of everything that's going on and saying, you know, is this, does this look like a knee pain? Does it look like a knee arthritis type of thing? Does it look like more of a tendinosis, more of a um, something else going on? And that will kind of address or kind of uh, lead to, you know, what treatment we take and in terms of physical therapy and also in terms of, you know, um, consultation with a doctor or other avenues. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. And, and, and what are the kind of things that, that you're looking for when you're sort of trying to understand what type of knee pain we might be dealing with and, and, and how much it's affecting someone's quality of life? Sure. So the big thing is probably kind of the, first of all, the location. So if someone says, you know, I just had this knee pain on the outside part of my knee, you know, that might be thinking something more of uh, tendinosis, something going on there, or maybe it's a knee pain just below the kneecap. Um, that might be another diagnosis. But if it's someone who says, maybe I had this um, kind of knee pain throughout the knee joint or at the joint line, um, again, talking about, you know, what kind of led to it. Of course, if you were playing football or soccer and you cut weird and, you know, that might obviously show something else. If you have something that's been bothering over time, you know, you kind of notice it first thing in the morning, it's a little achy, but it loosens up, but now it's getting more intense or more frequently that you're having this pain and discomfort. You know, those are the things that are pointing more to a um, arthritis type of knee pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and for, from your experience, I guess, do, do you find that knee pain, is there any particular pattern over, over, over different ages or different types of activity that people might do? So it, it's a mix. Um, I think that, you know, the, it's very important to stay active. So obviously arthritis is going to be uh, more prevalent in the older adults. Um, people who I told, tell people it's kind of the Goldilocks. So people who are very sedentary throughout their lives, throughout their adult life, they tend to develop knee pain more often. Mm -hmm. People though, who are extremely active, you know, the people who are running ultra marathons and you know, very, very, very high levels of training and high frequency of training, 
they're also more likely to develop arthritis. Um, people who are kind of in that middle who, you know, exercise moderate intensity a couple of times a week, they tend to be more in that range where you're have the best knee health um, for a variety of reasons. So usually it's those people who are on the different ends who are very sedentary, um, may have some difficulty managing their weight, things of that nature. And then there's people who are, you know, extremely, extremely, um, you know, trained for ultra marathons or cross country skiing, whatever it may be. Or it might be someone who has had a traumatic incident. So someone who tore an ACL or something like that, that can also, um, be a risk for developing some arthritis down the road. And so if we're, if we're talking about knee arthritis and of course everyone is different and everyone will you know, have, have, have their own journey with, the, with, with this, but is, is, is there anything, you know, in terms of, you, you mentioned the importance of keeping active and like, of course there's no such thing as a magic bullet, but by and large, you know, if you were to summarize what is like the, the key thing or like the most useful thing to help manage uh, knee arthritis from a physical therapy point of view? Yeah. So I think the big thing is there's a lot of misperceptions about knee arthritis. So a couple of things are that, um, you know, if I do stay active and if I'm exercising, if I'm putting weight, um, putting stress through that joint, that's just going to lead to a further progression of that arthritis, lead to further breakdown of the cartilage, um, leading to needing a knee replacement. And that's actually almost exactly opposite of that is the staying active, doing exercises, um, whatever those exercises may be, you know, strengthening exercises, range of motion, or just general healthiness, you know, going for a walk, things like that is actually going to be the best thing for the long-term health of your joint. Um, it's going to help with the, the fluid, the lubrication of the joint, help bring in nutrients, remove waste. So really staying active, although it seems counterintuitive because you're putting a little more stress to that joint. So you think that would lead to more breakdown, but it's actually in the long term, it's going to be the best overall thing for the health of your knee and your joint. Yeah, that, that is really interesting. And it's a valid point. And, and, and it's something that, that we see questions around quite often as well, because it's quite, can be quite difficult to find that balance. And it can certainly feel a bit counterintuitive if, the knees hurt or a knee hurts right it hurts when when you're trying to exercise like are, are there any strategies that you have found in terms of how like how do i know if i'm doing enough or when to stop doing something or like it's, of course it's very difficult and it's very personal but are there right. any general themes around that well an important thing that i'd like to tell people is you have to realize that there's a difference between pain and there's a difference between pain and causing in, injury or damage to your your knee or your joint um, the threshold that your body starts to experience that pain level is kind of a little lower and where you're actually causing damage and harm to your joint, that's going to be a little bit higher up. You know, your pain is a, a protective signal to your alarm signal that, you know, kind of watch out, be careful, but it's not necessarily meaning that you're causing any damage or harm to the joint. And of course there's, you know, you can go on for a long time discussing pain and pain science and things like that. But um, the thing I tell people is, in the short term, when you are exercising, when you are active, you probably are going to have some pain and discomfort, especially if you're someone whose arthritis is a little more severe, or a little more intense. Um, the thing to keep in mind, though, is you're not necessarily causing any damage or harm to the knee joint. Now, of course, the pain is very real and it's something that the person's definitely experiencing and it can make exercising and being active a uh, difficult task. Mm -hmm. So I tell people the best thing you can do is, you know, start at a low intensity, start at a low frequency, mm -hmm. and just kind of listen to your body and build up from there. It's okay to have some pain and discomfort, but we don't want it to be to the point where it's so intense that either you're not going to be motivated to exercise or you're just not going to, you know, you're not going to feel able to do it. You know, you're, you're going to put yourself out for a couple of days afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of staying in that kind of that happy medium again like I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and as ever, it's about finding the balance, right? And right, and it's, body as you do. You're right, and it's a lot of guess and check, you know, it's no, there's no perfect science to it. You know, one person could do one intensity level and feel okay, and the other person could do um, that same level and have extreme pain. So you really have to find that balance for yourself, and it takes some time.
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's about the, the level of intensity that's appropriate for different people will vary, as will, of course, the different types of exercises and, and, and how the routines come together. But right. And, and, while, and while that's an intensely uh, personalized, or needs, needs to be an intensely personalized thing, what, what would you say if you, if you if you were sort of to go away to a desert island uh, where you were going to be managing uh, knee, <laughs> knee arthritis and you could only take you know a small bunch of exercises with you, which ones would it be? What is sort of the core building blocks of your uh, knee arthritis regime, so to speak? Right. Well, I would say if you're going by the book, I would say range of motion exercises. So mm -hmm. working on straightening or knee extension and working on flexion, uh, bending of the knee. That's going to be extremely important, especially if you're someone who is considering surgery down the line, down the road. Um, also strengthening. So with arthritis, there can be some weakness. There can be some atrophy of the muscles of your strength, your quadriceps, your muscles of your thigh. Um, this can be you know, because of pain, because of swelling, because of inactivity, whatever that may be. And when you have... Those two things, of course, there's also balance and proprioception and things like that. But if you don't have good range of motion and if you have weakness and instability, that's going to make a lot of your day-to-day -day activities very difficult. You know, anything from standing up from a chair to going up and down stairs to just, you know, standing to cook a meal or, you know, clean the dishes, whatever that may be. So those would be my two, you know, things to focus on would be the strengthening exercises and range of motion type exercises. Um, but I would say that at the end of the day, if you, you could have the best, you could have a list of the best exercises to possibly do, but if the person doesn't do them, then it's all for naught. So I would say the best exercise, this is something I'm borrowing, but the best exercise is the exercise that you do. So whatever is going to keep you motivated, if that's walking, if that's, um, going on a elliptical machine or a recumbent bike, mm -hmm. if it's gardening, if it's whatever it may be, playing with grandchildren or children, mm -hmm. I think that's really the most important. Sometimes we complicate it too much and people kind of lose motivation. Um, but I think anything that can keep your body active, keep up your endurance, your strength, um, that's going to be the most beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, that that's such a valid point. And it's something that people may have heard before, but it's worth saying again that, you know, the, the best exercise is the exercise that you can keep doing on a regular basis, whatever that right. is. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned a term there that may not be uh, obvious to everyone, uh, proprioception. Yep. Uh, would, would you mind touching on that just uh, before we move on? Sure. So proprioception is essentially your body. So if you think about your feet and your ankles and your legs, it's the ability of um, interpreting kind of the sensation and the signals that are coming into the body so it knows where it is in space. So essentially, it's helping with your balance and stability as you move throughout the world. Um, your, your, your balance is part of it is your vestibular system or your inner ear. Part of it is your vision. And then it's your proprioception. So that sensation, feeling your feet, feeling your ankles on the floor. You know, if your weight shifts forward, you can sense that. If your weight shifts to the side or if you're, you know, wherever, your body can sense that. So more or less talking about just balance and stability, you know, as you're doing your day-to-day -day tasks. Okay, okay. Right, well, th thanks for that. That was very, very well, well summarized. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we, we've, we've talked a bit about generally managing knee arthritis. And of course... Where, where where exercises and 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 other uh, other management techniques aren't enough, surgery may be required. Um, right. And 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 so for those who are sort of in like on on perhaps on that trajectory, trajectory sorry, uh, but but are having questions about whether you know is it the right time? And this is a question that we see many you know, many, many people sort of asking about like, how do I know that it's the right time for me to have a knee replacement or when do I know? Or, and, right. and of course, it, in many cases, there isn't a, a clear cutoff. And again, it's something that's very personal, but how, what, what was been your experience in terms of dealing with those kind of questions? Yeah. So, I mean, of course the big thing is everyone is an individual. Um, but I would say that well, I'll put a couple of things. So first of all, a lot of people will put a lot of weight on the x-ray results. Mm -hmm. I want to tell people that x-rays are just one part of the picture. Um, you know, your x-ray result 
is going to show what's going on in your knee, but it's not going to show what your symptoms are, what you're feeling day to day. There's people who have very significant arthritis if you look at their x-ray, but they're functioning pretty well, have very minimal pain. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have people who might have very little arthritis, have more or less healthy looking knee, and they might have very significant pain and discomfort. Mm -hmm. So the x-ray results are just one part of the picture, one part of the bigger picture when just making this decision. So that's one thing that's really important. Um, another thing is I tell people, you know, it comes down to your, your symptoms. So if you're someone who is experiencing significant, significant pain and discomfort and stiffness and tightness, and it's impacting your quality of life, that's when you really want to start to consider knee replacement surgery. If you have a little bit of pain, a little bit of achiness, but it's more or less manageable, well, then knee replacement probably isn't appropriate, at least at this point. Mm -hmm. The other thing I tell people to consider is knee replacement should be your last resort. It should be the last thing. Um, you know, there's some um, images out there that they show that you know, for everyone with knee pain and arthritis, you want to do the conservative treatment things such as activity modification, education, physical activity, exercise. And then for some people that might not be enough. So they might go up to that next tier and that next tier might be um, a steroid injection. It might be the uh, gel shots, the visco supplementation, things of that nature, um, anti-inflammatories. So that's kind of that second tier. And then you have the third tier is really when you start to look at, you know, a knee replacement surgery. So you want to think about it as kind of your last resort. There are risks involved with knee replacement surgery. It is a good surgery. It's not necessarily a great surgery. You know, there are people who have a knee replacement surgery and unfortunately aren't, aren't satisfied with the outcome for a variety of different reasons. So it's something that you definitely don't want to jump into. You want to really consider seriously and make sure you've looked at the conservative options before going to have a significant knee replacement surgery. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's also worth flagging as well, a sort of similar point around, around injections into mm -hmm. a rheumatic knee. Um, steroid injections, you know, that can be helpful with relieving pain and other types of injections, but for which... You know, there's a there's a wide variety of different types and there's a really wide spectrum of the level of evidence of things working and and, and so on so so it's really worth asking around uh you know in in, in terms of in, injections into a knee where there is uh, quite severe arthritis and and sort of trying to get a good understanding of how likely that is to help right uh, but and so 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 for let, let's say uh we're quite firm in 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 uh in in our um decision to go ahead with with having a knee replacement uh would you then sort of uh are, are there things that you would tailor or sort of add into an exercise routine as someone sort of starts getting ready for surgery are there what kind of things would you be thinking about then in terms of you know tr tr trying to help someone to 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 prepare as as and 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 get ready for surgery in the best way possible right so i think i would go back to those two things you were talking about you know if you're on that stranded desert island yeah. Um, you know, the range of motion and the strengthening. Yeah. One of the, kind of the biggest predictors of having a good outcome after knee replacement surgery is your range of motion early on, your ability to straighten the knee to perfectly straight or zero degrees and the ability to also bend the knee. And one of the big predictors of that ability is what your range of motion is before surgery. So the more that you can increase and improve and maximize your range of motion before surgery. So that's doing those exercises that are working on the straightening, the extension, and also the flexion and bending. The more of that you have going into surgery, the better off you're going to be, the faster your recovery is going to be and the return of that range of motion. And then the second one, of course, is the strength is extremely important as well because you know strength is how your body moves and how you get around. And after you have a knee replacement surgery, there is significant atrophy, there's significant decreased force of contraction, especially a lot of the studies look at your quadricep muscles, your thigh muscles. Um, and the more that you can have that strength, so you know you're going to lose it, you're going to lose some strength, there's going to be some atrophy, that's just part of the process. But if you're starting from that higher point where you're stronger going into surgery, you're going to be better off you know, when you come out of surgery and kind of have a head start compared to people who might not have done those exercises before. 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, and I think be, be, before before we move into to, to the next segment, so to speak, and 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 uh, and you show us uh, uh, some of these exercises, um, should should we touch on how uh, how an exercise plan might change, or what are some of the key milestones after surgery? Sure. So, um, so early on, I would say, you know, when you're in the hospital, the the big thing is just early mobility, getting yourself moving, um, preventing the decreasing the risk of blood clots. So really simple exercises, doing them either in the bed or sitting up, um, ankle pumps, um, glute squeezes, quad squeezes, quad sets, uh, heel slides, knee bends, things like that. As you get up, as you start walking and improving your mobility, which you know usually it's the same day of surgery, you're getting up, getting moving. Um, there's lots of research out there about how prolonged immobility can really have a lot of negative consequences. So it's really important and something that's really been um, improved, I think, as of recently, is getting people up, getting people moving really early on. And um, as your strength in increases and your walking ability increases, we tend to move away from focusing just on the impairments. So focusing just on the range of motion or the strengthening. And now we really want to start to focus, you know, moving into a couple of weeks after surgery, focus on your, your function. You know, are you able to do the activities that you enjoy, whatever that may be? Are you able to do your, um, you know, what's required for your employment or your career if you're working still? Um, focusing on a lot more on functional dynamic exercises and movements more so than just, you know, having that tunnel vision just on the knee and the range of motion and the strength. Those are extremely important, but at the end of the day, if you have all the range of motion in the world and you can't, you know, go to work and do whatever your job requires of you, then you're not going to be happy and you're not going to be, oh, you know, functioning well within your, your life. Yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. I think really the, the, the key thing is to, you know, treat the pain and enable a good quality of life, whatever that means for you as an individual and the activities that you want to be getting back to, that you want to be doing safely and happily. Right. Be, be, before we then um, uh, move into the next sequence and, and you take us through some of these exercises, is there anything else that you'd, that you'd want to add or say about uh, the exercises that you're going to be showing us? Uh, so for the exercises, they are mainly, these are just, probably kind of the most common exercises that I share with people that I see. Um, these are kind of the ones that are focusing a lot on that knee strengthening range of motion. Um, as you, of course, as I just said, as you get going, you're going to do a lot more dynamic things, a lot more things that might be more specific to your needs and your goals. Um, I'd also say that these exercises are great for prehab before surgery, and they're going to be some of the important ones and good ones to do after surgery as well. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. And, and, and I'd also, I'll also flag, you know, as, as ever though, you know, you may have an individualized plan, in fact, probably will do. And so Absolutely. if you're watching this, you know, always, always make sure that you're checking in with your surgeon and your team about the exercises that are appropriate for you, be that before surgery and certainly in the early stages after an operation. Right. Absolutely. You know, these are kind of the overall big picture of some of the exercises out there, but yes, listen to your specific, um, medical team and your physio and you know they'll give you the appropriate advice for your needs so uh basically yeah now i guess we'll hand the screen over to you so that, that we can get a good sense of um of of the key movements that, that you'll take us through uh and i'll um yeah i'll, I'll do that just now and look forward to uh, to seeing the exercise and i'll follow along as best as i can okay great super all right over to you all right so let me back up my screen a little bit here Actually, I'll just move this. All right. So I got the therapy table over here. Can you see that okay? Yeah, that's looking good. Okay. So first one, first couple I'll take you through are just some exercises that focus on your strength and your range of motion. Um, so really early on after surgery, but also before surgery, knee extension is very important. So that's knee straightening. So our goal, most people that come out of surgery, they'll be maybe um, 10 degrees from perfectly straight or 15 degrees from straight. But our goal is usually within that first week is to get to zero degrees or perfectly straight. So 
One of my favorite exercises is quadriceps sets or quad sets. And so you can do this either laying down or sitting, um, long sitting with your legs straight like this. And what I like to do is you have a towel roll. Some people like to use a foam roller or something like that. And basically you just stick that under your heel. And so you'll have that under the heel of your surgical leg. Most people, they'll kind of be bent up a little bit, if you can see that, um, just because you have some stiffness and swelling after surgery. And what your goal is, is you're gonna um, contract and squeeze your quadricep, this muscle on your thigh. And as you do that, you wanna push your knee down into the table to try to straighten the knee. So you're gonna push like this, try to straighten the knee. Usually I have people hold that for about 10 seconds or so. Early on, if that, that's not very tolerable, I might hold it for five seconds, but usually try to work up to about 10 seconds. So squeezing, contracting that muscle and pushing the knee down into the table straight. Hold for about 10 seconds. I like to do 10 reps of 10, but you know you can really be creative however you want with that. Um, as you go along, you can kind of progress this differently. So sometimes I have people do what's called low load, long duration. So that's basically, um, holding this position for a prolonged time and kind of letting gravity assist with improving that knee extension and knee range of motion. And what you can do is if you have an ankle weight, and let me grab that. So you just kind of, uh, I think this is about an eight pound ankle weight. And if you lay that on your thigh, and then you can just relax maybe five minutes, 10 minutes based on your tolerance and allow that knee to stretch to straighten, um, let gravity kind of help you with that range of motion. So that's a good one for knee extension, for knee straightening. It's also good because it works on contracting the quadricep muscle early on. And as I talked about a little bit before, that muscle is gonna be atrophied, it's gonna have less force when it's contracting. So the earlier that we can get that firing again, the more we're gonna improve that strength and get you back moving quicker. So that's one for straightening for knee extension. Um, and I tell people that you can do that one, you know, throughout the day as many times as you feel comfortable doing it. Any questions with that one that look all okay? Yeah, that, that, that's looking great, Luke. That's looking great. Um, for, for those who might not have um, sort of ankle weights at home, is there anything that you'd recommend that sort of works well as an alternative? Yeah, so you can really put anything that any type of weight. Um, sometimes it's hard to find something that stays on the leg. You know, I've tried the textbook, I've tried with the dumbbell, but um, ankle weight is the best. If you have maybe some, maybe some heavy magazines or something, it's, you have to be creative, honestly. I, I've never really found something as good as the ankle weight, but, um, if you have something, anything heavy that can stay on that, on the thigh. I've also just had people just kind of put some pressure on and off with their hand it can be useful as well if you really can't find anything effective. Okay, okay, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'll show you heel slides. So heel slides is probably the first exercise that you're gonna do for knee um, flexion, knee bending range of motion. So this one, same thing, you want a surface where you can had your feet up straight, so either laying down or sitting up like this. And typically, you know, folks will do this in their bed. Most people don't have a therapy table at home. Um, if you can get down to the floor, um, you can do it there as well. But obviously, if you have knee pain, that might be a little difficult. So you just want to have a surface that can slide easily. Usually, if you have socks on, um, that slides okay on like a bed sheet or something like that. Um, if you tend to have some difficulty, people put like a, a plastic bag, like a grocery bag around their foot and put a little tie on it. Sometimes that slides easier too. Um, but again, being creative. Mm -hmm. And so you can do it with, I have a stretching strap here, um, but you can use a towel that you roll up, a bed sheet that you roll up. Um, you can use a belt, a dog leash, anything that works as kind of a strap. Mm -hmm. And you put it just around the ball of your foot here. And I'm actually going to lay down for a moment. And what you're going to do is you're going to slide your heel up towards your bottom while trying to bend the knee. 
So you're going to slide it up, basically go as far as you can tolerate. Mm -hmm. And then when you have the strap here, you provide an extra little pull. And the same thing with the quad sets. I like to hold this about 10 seconds or so, and then ease off of it. Mm -hmm. And then you can go up as far as you can tolerate, give yourself an extra little pull, hold for about 10 seconds, and then ease off of it. Um, this one, so we talked about this a little earlier when we were talking about the questions, is you know this can be really painful, especially after surgery. Um, same with the quadriceps sets. Unfortunately, there's going to be pain with the rehab and the recovery after surgery. Um, it's going to be probably significant pain. The thing is, you, we want to, again, find that, that moderation where we're, we're working on it. We're trying to improve the range of motion, going into that discomfort a little bit, but not going to the point where you have that 8 or 9 or 10 out of 10 pain because all that's going to do, unfortunately, is it's going to one, it might set you back where you can't do any exercises for the next two days because you're in so much pain and discomfort. And also what it could do is your body has these protective mechanisms built in. So if you're doing these things that are causing this pain and discomfort, your muscles are going to tense up. You might swell a lot. Your body's going to be kind of hypersensitive, extra protected. So I always tell people consistency is more important than intensity. You know, if you really crank on that knee and cause a lot of pain and discomfort, your body's going to get hyperprotective and it's going to be counterintuitive. If you're just consistently working on the range of motion, spending a lot of time in those positions, over time, you're going to start to notice the improvements. So consistency, a lot of time, a lot of repetitions. I like to be a proponent of that more so than really cranking super, super intensity. Yeah. There is going to be some pain and discomfort, but you know, we want to find that happy medium. Yeah. So that's heel slides. Let me check my list here. <laughs> and then also we're looking at um, just general strengthening. So sometimes we focus too much on strengthening at the knee. So the quadricep muscles get a lot of attention. Um, appropriately because they're really important but for your overall function your ability to do things we want to also work on strength throughout your legs so your your gluteal muscles um muscles around your hips as well so a lot of exercises are going to also focus on that so one of the most simple ones is bridges so this one again you're laying down and you're actually going to bend your knees up like this and you're going to squeeze your bottom. And I tell people, try to push the, the small of your back into the surface before you do it. Because, so I'll show you the motion. So you squeeze your glutes and you lift up like this and then back down. Now what happens sometimes is folks will tend to get a lot of emotion from their low back and you might get some discomfort in the low back. So I tell people before you do the motion, take that little small of your back, your lumbar spine, and try to push that into the surface. And that's actually going to tilt your pelvis a little bit and put you in a good position. So now when you do the bridge, the work is coming more from your glutes, from your bottom, and not from your low back arching. With bridging, it's there's a ton of ways to progress this, make it more difficult. Um, doing single leg bridge, doing isometric holds, um, incorporating like TheraBands, things like that. So it's a really great exercise because it's simple enough, but then you can also progress it a lot of different ways too. Mm -hmm. So that's bridging is a great one for this hips and strengthening. I'll show you clamshells as well. So clamshells, Again, another good one that you can use a TheraBand loop. We use these a lot in the clinic, um, putting it just around the knees, or you can put it kind of right above the knees or right below the knees. And what you do for a clamshell is you're gonna lay on your side and 
you're going to have a little bit of a bend, probably about 45 degrees in your hips and in your knees. And then you're keeping your feet together and you're lifting that top knee. And so it's going to look like this. So kind of like a clamshell opening and closing. And this is a good exercise for your gluteal muscles again, your gluteus medius, your gluteus minimus muscle, which are really important. Um, trying to think of a couple of things for this. I like to have people put your hands on your hip here, just because you tend to sometimes rotate outward like this, or you might rotate in too much. So kind of keeping that there as a cue can be helpful. If you can see that all right. Mm -hmm. And, and would you say, is it, is it all right to do them sort of without the TheraBand, let's say for folks who, do, who don't have a TheraBand at home, is, it, you know, is, is that an important piece of equipment to get, do you think? Or are there other things to be used or is it all right to use without? So it is absolutely all right to use it without the TheraBand. Um, the idea is you just wouldn't get that same resistance. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of clinics, they can, they, you know, they have these big rolls of them that they can usually cut you off a piece for relatively inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, the idea with the TheraBand is it's just going to give you that resistance, help build the strength a little bit more. But if you are doing it without the TheraBand, you're still, you know, getting some of those benefits, of course, as well at the same time by just doing the motion, doing the exercise. Yep. Okay. Um, check my list here. So. Those are some of the ones that you would do laying down. Um, I'll show you a couple of city, seated exercises right now. I'm just gonna slide this mat out of the way. Let me know if you have any other questions or anything. That good stuff, so, good. So these are just a couple of seated exercises as well. Mm -hmm. um, again, working on both range of motion and a little bit of strengthening. So a big one is gonna be your seated knee extension or knee straightening. So sitting up at the edge of the chair, you usually have about two thirds of your thigh off the edge of the, of the chair. And you're just gonna straighten the leg, extend it, trying to really focus on squeezing that quadricep muscle at the top, holding maybe for a second or two, and then coming back down nice and slow. This one, just like the quadricep set on the table or on a flat surface, is gonna focus on contracting and squeezing that quadricep early on to build strength. And of course, also working on that knee extension range of motion. That's a pretty straightforward one. As you get your range of motion back and are able to extend and straighten all the way, then you can add on some ankle weights, um, add a little bit of resistance to it just to get a little stronger connection, um, contraction from that muscle. Mm -hmm. The other one is heel slides. So this again, sitting at the end, edge of the chair, you want a surface that can slide easily um, I don't know if you can see it all right. Okay. <laughs> then, so I adjust my socks and the carpet. Usually that works okay. Sometimes people will, again, use that grocery bag, tends to slide, putting it around your foot. Or if you have sometimes a magazine and just a, a foot without a sock on, that can slide on the surface well too, kind of that glossy magazine cover. And so you start with the foot out in front and you're just going to slide your heel back as far as you can tolerate. The heel can come up a little bit as you get back and you're going to hold this position with the knee bent to, you know, as far as you can tolerate, holding it about 10 seconds or so and then letting it slide back out. And just like with the heel slides, you want to focus on consistency, doing a lot of repetitions, pushing it a little bit, but not super, super extreme, and just doing a lot of repetitions, you know, multiple sets, multiple times each day, especially early on. Um, to increase the bend, you can scoot yourself forward in the chair, 
You can also use your opposite leg and push on your, your shin and try to push it back a little bit more that way as well. And there's lots of different um, amounts of volume people do in terms of how long you hold it, how many repetitions. I do like 10 reps, hold it 10 seconds is usually just the easy way to remember it, to keep track of it. But you can really, with the range of motion exercises, you know, it's really do as much as you can. Spend a lot of time in those positions, do a lot of repetitions. Um, however you want to break that up is okay. With the strengthening ones, you want to maybe be a little bit more aware of the, you know, repetitions and sets. Um, you know, if you think about staying in that range of where you can do eight to 12 reps, where the last few reps are challenging, that's going to be more for um, hypertrophy, building up that strength. If you're in that like six to eight repetition range, that's more of the strengthening for the muscles. If you're getting up higher than that, 12 to 15 reps, that's something that you're more focusing now on endurance of those muscles. So for the strengthening things, depending on what your goals are, probably early on, you're more focused on strengthening and hypertrophy of those muscles. So you're probably in that range of maybe six to at the most, maybe 12 repetitions with hopefully those last repetitions being a little more challenging. All right. So those are a couple seated exercises. And then um, one other one I'll show you today is sit to stands. So some people, you know, they go into surgery or preparing for surgery and they have a lot of experience maybe with going to the gym and doing squats and doing deadlifts or what have you. Um, other folks, not so much. They, you know, they maybe have never been in a gym in their life. They just exercise in other ways or do other things. So sit to stands is a really great way to incorporate a dynamic movement. It's going to work on strengthening your glutes, strengthening your quadriceps. And of course, it's very functional. You know, everyone has to get up from a chair at some point throughout their day. So I like to do it. People sit on the edge of the chair. And I like to encourage people to try to do it without um, pushing up from the chair with their arms. If you need to, of course, you can. Or you, so you can put your hands on your thighs or you can cross them or cross your chest. And you're just going to stand up nice and slow and controlled and then sit back down nice and slow and controlled. As that gets easier, you can do maybe 10 repetitions. Now you want to focus more on that control when you come down. Instead of having a full seat, you just want to tap your bottom and then come back up. So you have that little more control with that eccentric motion and then that transition. And I find that's just a, you know, an easy way to still perform that movement of a squat, all the strengthening and the benefits of a squat without getting too much in the technicalities of, you know, using weights and using things like that. As folks get comfortable with the sit to stand, the real easy way to add some resistance is if you have a small dumbbell or if you have, you know, something around your home maybe that you can hold, just kind of like a goblet squat technique instead of doing something like, a, you know, um, on your shoulders or anything and just coming up and down like this. So actually I have a dumbbell here. Okay. So just holding it in front of you like this, you know, tends to be a little simpler in terms of technique and technicality of it all. Mm -hmm. okay. And so I really like that. And, and I guess of course, sort of any kind of reasonably compact weight would work. Uh, I don't know, like a, right. a big yeah. bottle of water or something like that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like a big bottle of water, um, a milk jug, something like that, if you can hold it. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So those are kind of a couple easy exercises. Here, I'll come back closer here. Super. Hey, well, th th thanks so much for that, Luke. I think that's a, that's a really... Um, a really nice run through of some so some really key tips and tricks, so to speak, in terms of managing uh, knee arthritis, and then also really more practically walking us through these exercises. And again, as you've highlighted, focusing on range of movement and strengthening, and then a few key things within that, of course, depending on whether you're getting ready for surgery or at the different stages of recovery. 
Yeah. Is, is is there anything else you want to add? I mean, of course, there's there's a million things we, we, we explore. And, and of course, I mean, we've said it before. It's always worth saying again. It's going to be individualized to you. Everyone's situation is going to be different. There's also differences in terms of the actual details of the procedure itself. And then there's the total knee replacements and the partial knee replacements. And there's some people who will have bilateral knee replacements and some people might have had operations on other parts of the body before and so on. So there, there's a lot to consider. And you know, we, we may need to dig into some of this in a more specific uh, separate session, but is, is there anything else you, you feel you'd want to sort of add just to kind of wrap this session up? Um, I think an important thing is that the entire knee replacement journey, you know, when I talk about things, when I do videos on Facebook or YouTube or on our website, I talk about the knee replacement journey. You know, it starts from someone with knee pain and arthritis mm -hmm. to, you know, trying conservative treatment. Maybe that's not ineffective. Talking about possibly having surgery, planning for surgery, surgery, rehab and recovery. Mm -hmm. And that journey can take a long time for some people and it's gonna be different timelines for folks. So some people might be you know, just in that conservative treatment and they might end up just staying in that conservative treatment for a very long time, which is ideal and which is great. Um, some people, they might be in the other zones more. Whichever part you are in the timeline though, it's important to remember that it's really a marathon, it's not a sprint. You know, the, the recovery, the preparation, everything, things take a lot of time, you know, just like someone who goes to the gym to lose weight or to, you know, get stronger, you know, that takes a number of weeks, a number of months. So sometimes folks will, you know, they said, oh, I've gone to two weeks of physical therapy, or I've done two weeks of exercising and activity, and I don't feel any better. And my pain hurts whenever I do anything. You have to give it, you know, give it time to to work, give it time for your body systems and biology to do what it does. Um, our bodies have a lot of great potential. Yeah. We just have to, you know, give it the tools to do that and give it the time and patience. Yeah. Um, obviously, really easy for me to say sitting here, someone who doesn't really have a lot of knee pain and yeah. is functioning okay. But you know, something that really is kind of a mantra and thing to remind yourself is it's a marathon, not a sprint. The yeah. more I can be consistent with doing the right things, you know, physical activity, exercise, but also the right, you know, whatever your doctor or your physical therapist says to manage wherever you are in this journey, um, being consistent and being patient can really pay off a lot in the long run. Absolutely. I think that's, that, that's, that's a really important message and it's, it's worth, worth, worth reiterating because it doesn't get any easier to hear really if, right. you know, what, when you're managing uh, pain or on the road to recovery or sort of working towards those treatment goals. And this the, the, what, one thing I would add to that as well, that kind of goes hand in hand with it and, so, and something that I have personal experience of as well is that unfortunate and frustrating thing that recovery is very rarely a linear thing. You know, it's it, odds are, you know, there's going to be good days and some days are not so good. And, you, you know, right. over time, if you keep at it, you know, you're going to you're going to improve your chances of, of having a good outcome and making gradual progress. But it right. might not always be smoothly progressing like that. It's good. It might be a bit of a sort of, you know, gra graduated thing over time. Right. And I, I always like to tell people, you know, that in the in the long term and you know if you look at people two years out three years out five years out from knee replacement surgery the vast majority of people not everyone unfortunately but a large proportion of people they have a positive outcome they feel better they're happy that they had a knee replacement surgery so um again it's that consistency like you said gradual is a great word it's a gradual improvement you're not going to wake up one day and be a hundred percent be, Oh my gosh, it's a miracle. It's something that, you know, you're going to have these symptoms. You're going to have these lingering things, but you're going to have that stiffness, but over time it will decrease in frequency over time. It will decrease in intensity where hopefully you'll get to a point where you can more or less be happy and do the things that you want. You know, every now and then you might have a little stiffness or a little ache or pain, but you know, that's coming from where you were before surgery. I think a lot of people would be happy with that compared to how they felt before knee replacement surgery. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and I think, you know, ha having that positive mindset, that positive end goal in sight, I think that's, that's a, 
an image, a, a nice image to, to, to end the session on uh, and, and something that is worth also reminding oneself of when, you know, wherever you are in that journey, you know, you're watching this right now, just make sure to keep that positive end goal in sight. Um, yes, yeah. absolutely. Luke, thank you so much for this session. It's been, it's been really, really great, you know, digging into your, to your experience and, uh, and, and these exercises and, 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 and these things we've touched on. Uh, to everyone watching this, I uh, really hope you've enjoyed the session. There'll be contact details and links below here to where you can get in touch with, uh, with, with Luke um, and watch other videos and, and engage through social media. And of course, as ever, if this session has sparked any questions, do let us know. If you have any suggestions for things to dig into, send them in, we'll get to it. And in the meantime, everyone, you know, be safe, keep up the good work, and um, we'll see you next time. Take care now. Thank you. Bye-bye.